actually, that was actually, it was very impressive. It was very impressive. Right. Got what you needed to say. Hi, Elizabeth, great to meet you. Cynthia Francis, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Pierre from Students, we're nice to meet you. number two and uh, I assume those who are not here are the ones who went off to the mood after party last night uh, quite there I understand around 50 60 of us who apparently went to celebrate the installation of the 2007 playmate bunny of the year that was not our, our doing. We don't usually put those kinds of things on. But we happened, we did a, a merger with their party. So, um, and uh, congratulations to Famous Frame Mobile Interactive, which is the best of show. I love that name because for the search engines, it's perfect. It gets everything in there. They're famous, which is important in Hollywood. Frames, so you got the movie part of it. That's good. Mobile, you want to have mobile and everything. And of course, they're interactive too. So it's great. Should have won just on the basis of their name. So um, welcome again to day two. And so social media. Uh, so far, it's one of these servants in waiting, at least, as far as mobile goes, uh, as far as mobile goes, certainly in the United States, <clears throat> something that has a lot of potential but hasn't been fully exploited. I've seen it, uh, I've seen some interesting iterations of it in Europe, uh, but it still hasn't reached anything like the level of uh, sophistication that we're seeing, obviously, on the web although it has potential to be far, uh, a far greater tool given the fact that SMS is already such a huge presence, uh, even in the United States. So the question is, how do we take it to the next level? How do we build communities? How do we organize it? What's the future? What's the migration path for the big social networks um, such as MySpace, who we have here today, other uh, YouTube and so forth, how does that translate into the mobile space? What can we expect in the months ahead? How quickly will it happen? How will it be monetized? And in less than 50 minutes, you will know the answer to every one of these <laughs> questions because we have such a bright panel for you today. Um, not. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, they're bright, but we won't have all the answers. So what we're going to do is we're going to, as we did yesterday, we're going to Go down the panel, let the panelists introduce themselves since they know themselves better than I do, and uh, then we'll get into the meat and potatoes. So why don't we, uh, Yuha, why don't we start with you and we'll work our way over. Sure, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I uh, am CEO of a new company that was just launched a month ago called Sonopia, S-O-N-O-P-I-A. Um, and we're a, kind of a new type of company. We still defy a category which can always be good or bad news, could mean that one else has thought that it's really worth doing what we do or that we have a really good idea. Um, basically what we do is we make it possible for anyone, any brand, any affinity organization to become a mobile carrier in less than 15 minutes. Uh, we've created a website that, where people can, can go few, uh, uh, through a few easy steps and at the end of that period they'll have a fully branded uh, presence on the web where people can buy phones, calling plans, uh, you will either even be able to design your own mobile will be provisioned onto the devices. Um, we also work with major brands. We, we've signed a number of, of uh, music acts, uh, sports teams, uh, and, and uh, environmental organizations that we'll be announcing. Uh, we've already uh, launched National Wildlife Federation's mobile offering, and that's tracking really well in terms of uh, subscribers. We've launched uh, national parks uh, for, for people who like to walk in parks, so uh, um, clearly the demographic that we have here today. Um, 
Sorry, I thought I'd try a little bit of morning humor to wake everyone up <laughs> after the party yesterday. Um, so I'm telling you, they were they were out partying last <laughs> night. So I, I think that's good. That's good to start. We'll get we'll get into more detail uh, in, in just a little bit. We're trying to just give a very quick overview. Yeah. Okay. So um, Elizabeth Sherman from Rever. I oversee content and mobile distribution. Rever competes with YouTube in terms of um, viral of videos online and across broadcast as well as mobile, except Rever screens out all copyright infringing material and shares all advertising revenue 50% with content creators. And on the mobile front, we have an exclusive deal in the U.S. with Verizon Wireless to power Rever mobile channel on Vcast. And interestingly, in sort of a validation of what we were talking about, the convert the whole idea of convergence, right? I yeah. mean, you come from end to mobile, not exactly uh, the premier social networking firm in the world. No. Uh, although, actually, you're probably a very good networker, at least from the <coughs> background I've seen. Okay. Good morning. I'm Pierre Manuel Straven. I'm Chief Marketing Officer for Streamezzo. Uh, Streamezzo is a European-based company. Uh, with presence uh, worldwide, including the U.S., and we develop uh, rich media clients for handsets. So we revolutionize the user experience by bringing uh, the graphics and the interactivity into the user interface. And uh, a good user interface is important for uh, every type of content, including user-generated content. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good morning. My name is Alex Kelly. I'm the CEO of Beaker Corp. Uh, Beaker is, stands for a video peak into life, and uh, our company has a belief that, you know, as these, all these camera phones are in people's pockets, 30-40 percent in the United States now going up to 70 percent or plus in uh, um, two or three years, uh, the power of a video message or power of a picture message is, uh, is, is so, much, um, uh, so much better than just a text or voice. There's more information that's passed, it's more immediate, it's more exciting. So what we've done at Beaker is created a platform to make that incredibly easy for anybody with a camera phone to do it. So it works um, right now in the U.S., but uh, we can flip a switch. It works worldwide. Uh, and take video pictures off your phone using the native technology, no application download. And through our site, either to a community on our site, uh, to a MySpace page, to a um, blog, any HTML page, back down to the phone or also uh, in conjunction with partners. So it really is making it very, very easy to share video and pictures from anybody through uh, any brand partnership or just amongst your friends. Okay. And I'm Cynthia Francis. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Reality Digital. Reality Digital is a company that enables businesses to provide uh, sort of MySpace and YouTube capabilities on their site, either for the purposes of a standalone campaign, for example, something around a brand or a conjunction with a sponsorship from an advertiser, or uh, as a standalone site, so we're the back end for sites like Lonely Planet TV, Addicting Clips, uh, so many smaller affinity groups like NewBaby.com, Capitol Hill Broadcasting, and the like, and we enable uh, mobile phone and mobile device upload, as well as playback on smartphones at this point. So um, I think with all of these technologies, I mean, really, you can sum up almost everything we do in our whole raison d'etre, terrible French, um, uh, as being we know what the technologies are. Uh, we know what's going, I mean, really, most people who are already in this room know what's going to take and how it's going to take. I can tell you what social uh, networking is going to be like in 10 to 15 or 20 you may all be out of business, uh, but uh, it, we know it's going to happen ultimately. So the question is all, what's the uptake? How quickly will it happen? And so uh, as far as this panel is concerned, it could probably be summed up as saying, okay, SMS is a hit. We know that. Um, it's making money. It's very profitable. And there are a lot of other pie-in-the-sky scenarios for social uh, network and, and social networking, social media space that we assume are going to happen, how quickly they're going to happen is the question. So why don't we put that out. Uh, what is the um, uptake curve for social media as far as mobile goes? Who wants to take a stab? Elizabeth, you look like you knew um, something. I, I can speak to it from our experience having been live um, on Verizon Wireless with user-generated content for six months now. Um, you know, there have been months where we have been in the top ten 
all the VCAS channels. So I think there's high receptivity to it on the part of consumers. You know, you're still looking at a 2% adoption rate in this market where there are fairly high barriers to entry in terms of monthly subscription fees at $15 and north. So, you know, I think we're still looking at early adopters, 18 to 34, trendsetters, key influencers. They love social networking content. It speaks to them. It's short. You know, it's snack size entertainment. Board. They look at their phone, and the clips have standalone value, and there's a payoff. So I, I do think there's a market for it. You know, as, as we always say at these conferences, you know, it, it's going to be about getting mobile advertising jump started and to turn these subscription based services over to free ad supported models. And then I think we'll see enormous adoption and business models will evolve. Hmm. And what's the, what is your sense of the, first of all, how is that doing in Europe? And because presumably they're a year or so ahead of us. How is the ad supported model going? And how is the receptivity of American carriers to doing that? I wouldn't dare to speak on behalf of U.S. carriers. I have to work with them. <laughs> um, you know, the, everyone reads MoCo News. There are a lot of ad-supported trials going on both here and overseas. And, you know, every market is very different, and this market in particular has unique characteristics that no one else in the world has. And, you know, I think that everyone is toying with it. There are lots of companies circling this from Rhythm New Media, AdMob, um, third screen, and I think, you know, preliminary reports talk about CPMs north of $100. I don't think we have enough data points yet to know. I mean, I, I think it's the ultimate, as an advertiser, it's the ultimate one-on-one -on -one messaging to a consumer who's increasingly turning out of television and traditional media. It's a way to reach someone. I mean, there is an incredible amount of data that a carrier knows about you based on your you know, area code of your phone and psychographics, and that gets into privacy issues. So, you know, it's, it's complicated, but I think ultimately that is where we're going, and it's, you know, it's an exciting time to test it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it also really depends on what, um, when we say social networking or social media, it has a lot of different meanings. So Elizabeth's done a great job of outlining um, what it means when you're talking an entertainment channel but for example for some of the companies that we enable we did a campaign with oodle um, that was uh, they wanted to increase their visibility in the college market and so they did a dance campaign with the dance marathons with a number of universities and they had shake your oodle which was a site where kids that were at these dance marathons would shoot content on their cell phones be able to upload it it would be live on this shake your oodle site um, and that was right along with professional content Is that still up there it was actually last year shaker so. Shake your oodle. Oh, shake your oodle. Yeah, oh boy. you should see some Dating of the stuff people here. thought that meant. But at any rate, um, it was it, it was a, it's an example of it wasn't a pure entertainment site in the sense that what the participation was was they were asking people to upload a particular kind of content. Um, and similarly, if you're looking at an affinity group, um, whether it's you know new parents or whether it's people who are, for example, uh, really interested in cooking, and so it's a cooking site and have recipes that people are uploading and then they're downloading it to their mobile device when they're in the store. There's a lot of ways that that's Was this actually being, was this being downloaded to people's mobile phones or was it largely online? It was uploaded from mobile uploaded and from it was mobile. primarily accessed, it could be accessed either way, but I imagine given the fact that most of the access to these things now is primarily online, um, it was more than likely true to statistics, not primarily being seen back on mobile, it was primarily being seen online. So again, that's what I say, I think where we are with social collaboration in a mobile environment, we're at the very cutting edge, and it really depends on, as a company, what are you trying to accomplish? What's the business model around it? Sorry. Right. Yeah, what's, what's interesting about that is, I just want to drill down on that just a little bit. Uh, was it only via mobile? I mean, if you wanted to, if you had a good... No, if you if you'd shot something with DV, you could... Up, you, know, you could also up upload that. From your and computer, do you know yeah. what the percentages were of people who were using a DV versus using their mobile phone? There was higher, in that campaign, there was higher mobile upload oh. other than the professional content, which they were actually shooting some at some of these events and uploading it. But that's because, again, they were inviting these kids who were already there and had uh, video phones with them to be able to do that. Upload. Well, inviting the kids, but also it's, it's an interesting point there because I would assume a lot of these kids didn't have camcorders because their parents of course. Weren't, weren't about to Well, they weren't sending to them to a dance them, marathon right? in a camcorder, yeah. So, I mean, this is actually a really critical point. Um, and, and
behind, I think, the adoption mm -hmm. of SMS by a large percentage of the world's population. It isn't because they like SMS better than voice messaging. It's because it's cheaper, and for the young, and for the young people, I can speak for myself, they want to uh, limit the usage, their kids' usage of phones, right? Um, or for, for voice calls, so that's very interesting. And how many people ultimately participated, do you know? I don't have that statistic. I'd be happy to get that and make it available. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. I was just going to add, um, you know, important distinction. Um, we're talking about content from Rever going down to the phone. It's typically the hit content on Rever. Is that correct? Um, right now it is, but we're also looking at powering mobile ingress solutions. Right. So it's it's taking uh, you know, good content that's sort of been vetted on the internet already and pushing it down to a mobile device for consumption. And um, we're also talking about content going from the phone up. Mm -hmm. And it's you know. From our perspective, we see you know, there's huge opportunities in both. Um, mm -hmm. We're focusing on the phone up, and the real reason from a social networking standpoint is the typical social networking experience is this. You're at your computer like this, and you're tethered to your house or your computer or wherever you are. Uh, by taking content and being able to publish to your social network or to your, or create a social network that's purely directly from the phone to your friends, back down to their phones, it brings you out and it sort of takes you out of the, the bedroom existence of an 18-year-old to a uh, living, you know, in the coffee shop or with your friends in a bar or whatever. Um, and that's a, that's a very specific distinction. And, you know, talking about costs and, and what's happening with um, the capability of sending picture and video messages, this is something that the carriers are embracing, especially in the U.S. I'm only speaking in the U.S. right now, but conversations we've had with them, pricing is being changed so that um, the, the messaging costs are the same as text messaging costs. They're in the same bundles. Um, they're changing the, 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 the messaging on their websites. Instead of saying you can MMS something, they say it's picture messaging or video messaging. Um, you know, I know they're actively building different ways to make it actually easier to take the pictures and publish or videos and, and publish it from the phone to their own sites or, or moving out. So it's definitely something that that the carriers are looking at as a as a big opportunity. Um, and you know how that how the business models bear out. How um, you know what happens with advertising? I completely agree. Advertising is a, a you know a, a very very soft area right now, and nobody can really speak to it because the carriers believe they own that bandwidth down to the. Therefore, the advertising should be partly theirs. You know, it's the same same issue you have with a MySpace saying they own that air, they own that 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 real estate. So therefore, if you have a piece of content you're delivering there and you're trying to put an advertising or any monetary uh, revenue generating um, uh, content against that, they're going to shut you down because it's against the T's and C's that you agreed to when you you set it up. So there are a lot of unknowns, but at the end of the day, if people are trying to consume media in this way and people are are you know you're impressions are being generated, the business models will work themselves out and everybody will get a piece so that uh, you, know, you can actually do this. Um, I was going to, Pierre, I was gonna, you're the obvious person to speak to the advertising issue. I just wanted a quick um, question here. I'm uh, typing, taking notes for my blog here. Is that disturbing anyone? I'm noticing there's a little bit of feedback in the mic. Can you hear that? Is it bothering anybody? Okay, good. Then I'll keep doing it. And I'll do it louder. Um, so, uh, Pierre, I mean, here we are in the United States wondering whether these advertising work, you have presumably much greater familiarity with the European market. How's it playing out there? Uh, <clears throat> about advertising, I think that the situation is pretty much the same uh, all around the place. Uh, there's a bit of uh, banner placement uh, in the web decks and uh, that's about it in terms of uh, mobile advertising. Uh, there are trials, uh, trials in video uh, services, so uh, trying to, uh, to see uh, how you can sponsor services pre or post video uh, ads or having banners uh, under the under the videos but we are really speaking about less than one percent of the uh, of the revenues generated on a service that uh, will come through advertising as we speak uh, what we hear from uh, from those trials uh, is that there is a, a great uh, end user interest but now we need to get the interest from the advertisers and so uh, mm. the, we're a uh, we're company we concentrate on the user experience so right now what we're doing is that uh, we are speaking with the advertisement agencies and uh, with the media buying agencies trying to define what will be the form
percentage of the ad spend, we're dating ourselves, uh, the percentage of the ad spend uh, of the Fortune 500, which was going towards the internet, had just crossed 1%. And, and the, and it's like 1%, who cares about 1%? And the, the, the point there was that these things move in, um, uh, what's the word, in, um, in multiples. They don't, what's the word, uh, geometrically. For a younger demographic to take their camera phone and to start telling the narrative of their life through videos and photos that they're taking throughout their day instead of just sending text messages. But you know, the question is when you get into sort of a MySpace world of sharing that with 10,000 of my friends, I mean, who really cares about seeing my pictures and videos? And what are you really going to see right now except like the dog on the skateboard that somebody's shooting that's funny? You Maybe the first five or six times you see it, but when everybody's shooting that, it's not so funny. That must so, be that's the that's the uh, equivalent in mobile of the pizza delivery over television, isn't it? I hear yeah, the dog on bit. skateboard about. I've heard it. It's the fifth time I've heard it in this conference. Well, so you think about what people are going to be shooting in terms of their social networking with their friends, and I think it's it, it becomes about sharing that in more of a world of private sharing than public broadcasting. And you know, to date, social network line has all been about, you know, particularly for the teen market, sharing my life with everyone. And I think part of what will be relevant about social networking on mobile is sharing my life both through text, video, and pictures I take on the go, because it's why I got a camera phone, is you know, sharing it with the people who are in my circle of friends and family. And I can have many circles and they can intersect, but I think it's more about the private sharing where that con, I, I would almost say now context is king in in that world. Mm, that's great. Well, and I think I would uh, presumably in the MySpace world already we're moving in that direction as well, just because of the sheer um, volume of of the content. Only the very very the dog on the the dog on the skateboard is is one of probably what millions of uploaded uh, videos that and this is the one that gets picked. Uh, but you how this kind of speaks to um, that's really the whole basis for this new launch of yours, right? This this idea of the private sharing using that as a basis for the creation of your model, right? Yeah, ba basically uh, um, our belief is that, in that social networking in a mobile context is very different from, from an online context in that people have much less tolerance, they have much less time, and they uh, use the social networking in much smaller increments. You know, I was at uh, the Web 2.0 conference uh, a couple of years ago when they had a bunch of teenagers on, up on stage and one of them uses MySpace over 100 hours a week. Um, you, you're not that uh, sort of continuous use on mobile. So it's very important to, to figure out, you know, where are these people who are going to be uh, social networking on mobile and, and, and how do you get to them and, and what is the usage model. And what we've, we've found is that um, probably the best way to get them is around the affinity teams they have. So if they like a particular sports team, chances are that they probably have something in common. That's a good start to start bringing them together. So what, what we did in our uh, situation, we actually created a a social network for each of the organizations that sign up with us. So it's kind of social network in a box that they can uh, start, so people can start generating videos, they can start generating uh, pictures and upload them and share them with friends that they connect with. And uh, in, the, uh, in the month since we launched, we've actually seen quite a bit of, of, of an uptick in the use of that. What, what's surprising though is that over 90% of the mob, mob blogging actually happens on the web 
which has led us to very conclusively decide uh, that um, while mobile is important, if you sit at a 19-inch monitor, there's no way in hell you're going to sit using a 2-inch monitor that's next to you. You're going to use that 19-inch monitor. So I think, you know, for all of, the, all of those of you who are thinking about social networking, don't think of mobile as an isolated sort of network. Think about the hybrids between the web and the mobile phone because that's really a, a, a key uh, cover of usability here. I think that's really important because, again, all the, of the businesses that we're talking to today, they're they're looking at mobile as they absolutely want to use a platform that's mobile enabled because they see it as something that's going to be coming but in terms of how many of them have an initiative today or a campaign that they want to put on or a site that they want to build with uh, you know with that percentage 90 percent mobile to, it's not that at all it's more we're aware that some people will do uploads from a mobile device we're aware that some people will want to view on a mobile device sometimes, but we need to have a campaign that allows us an, a web experience that has mobile capability. And this kind of brings us back to the, uh, the theme with which we launched the conference, which is if you look at mobile in isolation, um, you're, you're, lo you're looking at the wrong, uh, you're looking at the wrong issue. It's content that we talked about, untethered content. Content sometimes is wireless, it's sometimes online, it's sometimes in MySpace, it's sometimes in MySpace Mobile, um, you know, and that's really Elizabeth with your uh, initiative with with um, Verizon. It's really uh, an expression of that, isn't it? I mean, you have stuff that initiates on on the web. It goes to it goes to the phone. It goes to television, doesn't it? Yeah, um, Rever. Actually, what Rever does, it's a little bit unique in addition to screening out copyright infringing material, which I think on social networking on mobile is going to be a very hot issue very quickly. Even with sports affinity groups, someone's at the ballpark, you know, they snap a photo of a logo of <laughs> the Boston Red Sox or something and they put it up there, you know, that's copyright infringement. But I think, you know, what we do that's a little bit different is we take the licensing fee that we get from Verizon Wireless and we treat it like an ad buy. So a portion of it gets allocated back to the content creator. And we do the same thing on the channel we power in the UK called Fame TV on B Sky B, which is a user-generated uh, program, and people text in via premium text messaging to vote for their favorites, and those premium charges, a portion of that goes back to the content creator. So it's always about sharing that monetization with the people who actually create the content, and that's a very different model across well, all three platforms. And, and you, uh, to a certain now, I, I'm trying to remember if I have this correctly, there is an opportunity with these private networks for people to monetize it as far as their own groups. As I recall, is that correct? That's right. Explain we, how that works. Basically, what we, uh, you know, if you set up a carrier on our platform, um, you, it's your brand. The bill that reaches the consumers will have your name on it. If you call customer care, it'll have your, it'll be answered with your name. And every month we pay a 5% uh, commission, 5% uh, of the uh, total cell phone bill. So it's really taking the entry barriers for becoming an MVNO from, from up here right down so that, you know, even if can set up their own their own carrier. Huh. I think that what do you that, call that, that by the way? Uh, MVN what? MVNO Mobile Virtual Network Operator. No, no, what I don't do mean that. What do you, I mean? What do you what, what do what, we call them? What's the new term? What do well, you use? We call each of those a Sonopia because there's no other term, so we thought we made it might, might not just well try to. <laughs> I think other people may may come up with a different uh, <laughs> <laughs> mobile virtual network individual. Maybe uh, who knows? <laughs> yeah, we need another acronym. <laughs> <laughs> mm, so interesting. So. You know, I think that monetization is important, and I think it, it's it, while it's probably not the key driver for most of the smaller organizations, it certainly is for the larger organizations. But I think it's what I'd call a delighter for for the youth market. The fact that hey, if I have some really interesting content, I might be able to make a bit of money. I mean, it is interesting. I don't want to get away from too much from social networking, but I find that just a fascinating idea, and one which is which is uh, I think much more common in Europe, is it not, than it is here? I mean, there are coffee that have their in, in Germany that have their own MVNOs and so forth and this company in this country we haven't really gotten into it but the cable companies that have their white letter um, uh, white label excuse me um, uh, services branded as Verizon and so forth so interesting stuff yeah Pierre did you have a comment um, I think that when, when it comes to this user generated content and social networking thing on the mobile uh, we obviously the source for the content 
uh, where the success is, is today's online. So a big part of the question, I think, is how do we successfully bring the, that content and that social networking experience to the mobile? And today, most of the services are based on, on WAP or a, a, a top 10 of videos uh, that you can pick up from the deck, but it's really impossible on the mobile to do any search in a user-friendly way, and it's uh, you don't go to the long tail. You, stay in the very, very short tail uh, part of the world. And uh, a, a big part of the effort that By the way, do I, don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's true. You know, I mean, I use, um, I now, granted, I have a QWERTY keyboard, but I do that, I use Google every day. And um, I can, I search for, for almost anything. I, I can do something on a mobile as fast as I can do it on the computer. I meant when you're in a, in a service, yeah. that look for the, search the content within that service. That's very effective, at least uh, uh, to my experience. And uh, mm -hmm. that, that's a big part of the, of the work that we have to do, is to make sure that the experience that you have on the mobile, is, is, uh, it's possible to, to do this browsing within the content. So uh, I think the top 10 is nice for a start, and uh, you, you have uh, obviously very good uh, success there uh, with your uh, Revver service. But uh, we want to enable the customers uh, to really able to browse and uh, start maybe on, a, on an existing TV channel uh, it's easy for them if they don't want that channel to, to end up with the more user-generated content and uh, stop this silo approach where you have uh, the professional content on one side, the user-generated content on the other side, and try to make it easy for people to be snacking and taking bites here and there uh, without changing from one application to the other, without changing the look and feel, without going in other menus. And uh, we do a, a, a lot of uh, mobile TV uh, user right now uh, in, in Europe and Asia and really there is a, a big uh, push to try to mix within uh, the video at large experience so it's the it's the TV stream TV um, broadcast TV DVBH or flow and it's also user generated content and everything has to be found uh, within reach rather than in completely different applications so it's a very centric and maybe telco centric approach uh, but I think that how we will learn how to really change the user experience from a top 10 web deck based approach mm. to really uh, a user friendly approach very seamless well exactly. it's difficult and, to show or, it in a or panel, another way but, um, another shorthand for what you're saying is um, to open up the american market to off deck experiences i mean because well, one of the things clearly that's that is hurting the search search capabilities of the internet right are the barriers that we're putting up well nokia is offering silo already and in fact has a has a pilot program going with Meta Cafe on that. Mm -hmm. I mean when you talk to the average US consumer about sideloading content like their eyes glaze over and I would have to agree with Pierre that mobile search is not easy for the average consumer. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about usability for a consumer and you know it, it's very much like 1994 all over again in making it easy and I think the other thing that Pierre speaks to a little bit is pro of some of this content. So on a VCAST deck, for example, where it's MVOD, it's programming out channels and categories to sample, and on streaming loops, it's actually applying more of a professional programming filter so that there's storytelling going on through the clips. And I think this is something, to Yuha's point, that, you know, you might choose to spend 100 hours doing social networking on mobile, but my God, that bill be brutal. <laughs> right. And, you know, my kids brought one of those home ones, so, you know, no, that's not going to happen too much, and it's not what a carrier wants to see either, because they don't want that irate phone call from a parent. But, you know, the threshold for good content when you're paying the kind of cell phone bill you're paying is very high, and there has to be a professional programming filter against that. And I, I think that's a critical component. Either that or an all you can eat service, which. Um all you can eat can be very expensive if you're a carrier and you know you open up the pipelines and it there's a hard cost to send that's particularly right. video based content out that's, right. that's expensive like to not to mention will the network you know yeah. stay up with 230 million consumers using it that was As all a carrier you the, when, when you do all you can eat it's to kickstart a market yeah. it's not late on the adoption curve because as uh, you know the worst thing that can happen if you offer all you can eat is that people start eating a lot right? right it's just like if you run a uh, uh, sort of a, a 
cafe at one of the casinos, you know, you, you don't want people to, to eat more than what it costs to actually produce the food. I, I think to, uh, one of the things that's interesting uh, uh, to what you said, Pierre, is that this user experience, uh, bringing everything into reach, I think is so important. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I think the carrier deck is going to continue to play a big role. Uh, because uh, you know, even though Offdeck has been relatively successful in Europe, and we've seen that in, in many countries, um, it, as, as soon as things are two or three deep, people don't get to it. Mm. So um, I actually think the biggest inhibitor for social networking going really big in the, in the mobile context is usability. It's finding the right usage model that makes it possible to bring all these bits and, and pieces together without cluttering the screen and without making the usability model so complex that people just toss it. And you can, and, and in that context, um, the presence of the internet, right, becomes particularly helpful because it pushes people when they don't need to off of mobile uh, to a better user environment and, yeah. and lower bills, right? Yeah. And also yeah. something they understand. Yeah. And something they People understand. People are comfortable with it and there's business models around monetizing content on the internet. It's interesting. So what, you, what you're saying then is in the context of um, somebody like Sprint who's giving an all-you-can-eat data plan for around $20 a month, what you're saying is that will only work in an early adopter universe. That's right. It's to kickstart the market, it's to get the market going, right? To get some early adopters in, get them to start doing a lot of exciting stuff that exciting stuff has mass appeal, and then mind that, and then start tariffing it on an individual basis. Wow. Yeah, and it's, it's an unlimited data plan, but you're paying for video in addition to that. I mean, you have to pay a monthly fee for video channels on that per channel. Right. So again, video sort of doesn't fit into that model right. in the social networking sense that I come from. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we're touching a number of uh, uh, basic enablers, so uh, the user experience, the flat rate uh, the search engine, so all these need to be in place for the successful uh, services to be built on top of it. So it's, it's really an array of things that we need to do or the industry has to do, the telcos together with the, um, uh, the media companies, the content owners, uh, the technology companies. And if we get all that right, then uh, we will see that the exponential curve, it's actually an S curve because it ends up uh, flattening, but, uh, but uh, we will enter the exponential part of the curve. And I, I, I think that the only place in the world where we really see a successful off-deck um, or a very open system is Japan. Mm -hmm. And Japan, but what they did is exactly this, starting uh, back at, at iMode, they said, okay, we will concentrate on putting the right enablers in place. So cheap data, very good kickbacks to the uh, content owners, 90% right. to the content owners. Mm. Uh, so that sounds good uh, for the content owners. I used and so I like it. <laughs> and um, it, it, that, I think that's, the, that's what we have to try, uh, try to do, and it's really an industry uh, thing that we have to well, get together and uh, make the enablers right. Well, is it something along the lines of the way email became the um, enabler for the internet long before uh, we had video long before we had music. We were all sending emails to each other, and that be, that was a that's what got AOL up and running. So, I mean, are we shooting a little bit too high here in the initial stage uh, for social networking on mobile? I mean, we already have one social mo networking application which is going gangbusters, which is SMS. So, I mean, should we assume that for hmm, maybe the next uh, 12 to 18 months, that's what we build, and then, but we're prepared for the onslaught, the geometric curve in about two years. I, I think it's important to find applications that really work and have mass appeal to, to, to crack the market open for, for social networking. And I don't think we can solve all the problems. Uh, you know, it's not like the industry is particularly good at all, you know, having all the industry people going away and coming out with a solution that everyone just starts adopting. It's true Darwinism. So, you know, I think we're going to see experimentation around this for another two years uh, before the usage models start coming together. Right now, I don't think anyone can predict where advertising is going to go, where, how people really will collaborate with video, how the pricing and tariffing will work. So we're just going to see mass experimentation over the next couple of years. Okay. As Very well good. as in context, because I think, again, the technologies are, are great, and that's a great place to start. But if there's not strong business models beyond advertising, advertising is important, but there are other ways that people are going to want to access content. What content are they going to want to access? How?
A lot of those questions were, were in such the infancy of the thought process. Right. Um, okay, I'm going to take a few questions. I just wanted to also take a quick pull of the audience here. Typically what we do is we go seamlessly into the next panel while we're asking questions. But um, I'm aware also that people usually like to talk with the speakers. So I wanted to try a little experiment, which was possibly to leave like a, a three-minute uh, break in between this and the next session so that people have a chance to talk for a few moments, or we could go directly into the next panel. So uh, can I have hands? Who would like to take a break here of, like, say, three minutes between the two panels? Okay, and who would like to go just directly, seamlessly into the next panel? Oh, well, that answers my question. Okay, so we'll take a... Uh, we're, we're not... This is not, uh, this is not the end. It's not the end. We're going to take some questions now from the audience, but we will take a, just maybe a two, three-minute break between the two panels, and we'll experiment with that. Any questions on, uh, as I do the Phil Donahue thing, uh, do we have any questions from, <laughs> from the audience here, social networking? It behooves you to be social here. Okay. And if you can, um, just give your name and your affiliation as you ask the question, please. Hello, my name is Taylor Bayuth. I'm with Access 360 Media. Uh, I just had a quick question about um, uh, social networking. Um, um, obviously with mobile, but the um, uh, question pertains to social networking in, um, in, in the real world where you're actually trying to sync up with people um, at specific locations, either using GPS or services like Dodgeball. I guess my question specifically is why haven't these services gained traction and is there any plan uh, for the future? Isn't that what we've been talking about? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll take a quick shot. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest reason is, is uh, Carriers are trying to figure out how they make money on it. I mean, the technology is in a lot of phones out there, um, and you can download an application that can grab it, and getting those applications uh, to be ubiquitous so that it actually becomes useful from a, from a social networking standpoint has been very difficult. But in reality, it's, it is all about business model. We're trying to figure out, I think the technology is there enough where it, LBS services can be extremely useful. I mean, it's definitely, I've had conversations over the last week with probably five different think that that's the end game for them. I mean, everybody thinks that if we can get there, you've got the huge CPMs and, you know, people like Zagat and other one, other, you know, content owners are just looking for it. But the reality is just trying to figure out who gets the splits of the revenue. Okay. Now, I was going to take questions from our Moses system up there. Let's see. Uh, would one of you respond to welcome to MES? Uh, no, no. Don't want to use that one. These are you guys got to ask more, uh, do you use your phone camera and upload to MySpace? Okay, well, it's actually an interesting question. Do any of you? I Does actually, anybody here? Sorry, Alex, I actually upload to Radar. So um, that's what I do. And it, again, it's a closed circle. And I can view it either online or on my mobile with a thread of commenting from all of my friends. What I do, and I upload to Clip Shack, which is the reality digital sponsored destination site. So, gee, you I, better. I upload to all of them. <laughs> okay, I certainly mobile block all the time, but you know, I, I have a vested interest since my company is all about that. <laughs> okay, very good. How about the audience? Who here uploads to uh, Mo blogs to MySpace? One, probably the person who asked the question, right? Yeah. No, it, might, okay. it might be a demographic issue. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. May well be. Okay. Uh, well, I think most people here have, who here has watched a video on their phone or played a game? I would hope close to 100%. Oh, come on. I guess this is why you're here, huh? <laughs> to find out what is this, what is this video stuff, huh? Oh, is that what that is? Thank you. Oh. Using this. Oh, okay. Very good. So. I didn't think we were the right demo for my It didn't seem <laughs> quite right, but it's still interesting to find out. So, obviously, I wasn't in there. Now that I've made a complete fool of myself, do we have any more uh, questions from the audience? Um, could you tell us a little bit about the demographics of people who are using uh, social?
on mobile? Is it different from on the web, like with uh, MySpace? If you want to upload uh, videos, or more, you know, what kind of uh, age range or demographics that you could mm -hmm. talk about, please? Well, uh, yeah, for, for us, a number of the companies that I think have the most possibility for mobile um, are the affinity groups. So I mentioned uh, there's, we have a site that we uh, support called newbaby.com. These are all new parents, and the material that's on that a mix of professional content from advertisers like Gerber and Pampers and the rest, as well as user-generated content from the viewers, as well as uh, experts on issues like potty training or whatever. Um, the the um, the users have requested the ability to, to, to do mobile upload, but in terms of how much are they taking that content and actually accessing it via their mobile, it's, we don't, I don't have strong, I don't have clear numbers, but it's a very, very small percentage. I mean, it's less than 1%. And that demographic is, you know, new parents, so I would say 25 to 40. Um, on some of our other sites, again, we tend to have on those affinity groups, they're not the 18 to 35 demographic, unless you're talking about, we, we do have a couple of those, but in those environments, it's, it's a much higher adoption when you get into an affinity group where the, the compelling nature of the content would lend itself well to a mobile experience. It's, it's again, that adoption curve of how comfortable are those users with, with accessing that content on their phones. It's not very high. Okay. Um, we know from VCAST usage that the typical VCAST user is primarily 18 to 34, yeah. skewing heavily male. Um, you know, typical early adopter trends. Okay. Any final questions? Okay. Let's give them a hand. Okay. Thank you. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. So, um, as part of this little experience, we're going to take a two or three minute break, ask them uh, any questions you want, and if I could have the next panel begin to come up so they'll be ready to go. Hi, nice to meet you. A Veeper.